So in my last video, I showed myself harvesting some of the spirulina algae that I had cultivated. And in that video, I mentioned that it could be used as a form of carbon capture. Now, I shared that video on uh, many social media platforms, as you do. And on the bright green Discord server, which I also shared the video to, I had a suggestion about going uh, deeper into, you know, going further into explaining the uh, carbon capture potential of algae. Now, when it comes to carbon capture, there are two main man-made methods of doing this. There is the direct air capture option, which involves uh, directly uh, capturing uh, CO2 out of the air via uh, carbonate salts, via uh, compressing CO2 down into a solid form and various others. But the main principle is to use fans to blow and compress air into a space where it can be processed for storage or usage or what have you. Now, that consumes a lot of energy and it's not particularly efficient. We currently have 19 operational uh, direct air capture plants uh, around the world and together collectively they only capture about a tenth of a megaton of CO2 per year. There is a one megaton capacity direct air capture plant in the works but that won't be operational for a couple more years. Now, the other option, and the one which is the main point of this video, is using algae, specific forms of algae, to capture CO2 from the atmosphere and store it as more algae. And what we're going to do now is we're going to explore the potential for that as a carbon capture solution. Something to bear in mind if we were to choose algae as our main form of carbon capture is that it uses significantly less energy to operate but at the same time it requires fertilizer which direct air capture does not and so any algae farm would need to be uh, constantly maintained via the addition of fertilizer. However the upside is that Algae can consume a lot of CO2 really, really quickly. There's a paper I found by a Indonesian university of uh, Pasundan. And they have a paper which states that one kilogram of spirulina, that's dry weight, can absorb up to 1.83 kilograms of additional CO2 as more algae. So if you were to take a metric tonne of spiraling algae and you were to use that for carbon capture, that tonne of algae could absorb up to 1.83 tonnes of CO2. Now, when considering the viability of algae as a form of carbon capture, what you have to do is you have to look at various uh, factors which can influence this. For example, while that tonne of algae I mentioned earlier might seem a lot, it's actually uh, not much in terms of space because algae is typically very dense and so you can fit a lot of it weight-wise in relatively small bioreactors. And this means that because of its density and because of the viability of it in terms of its uh, carbon capturing capabilities, Algae-based carbon capture solutions can be integrated into urban environments uh, much more easily than direct air capture plants, which tend to be massive plants that need to be in the middle of nowhere to operate. Secondly, when looking at algae from a carbon capture perspective, you have to look at how much of that carbon will remain stored as carbon and not be released again as CO2. Algae as a material can be turned into a lot of different products and one of these is fuel. Now when you burn fuel 
you're releasing the CO2 back into the air. And so when considering uh, algae for carbon capture, you have to take into account the losses from the uh, production of fuel from the algae. One way we could permanently store the carbon from algae is to either use it as a food for humans or as a fertilizer for crops and other plants. That way, bacteria can't really get to it and start digesting it and releasing CO2 back into the atmosphere. Another way we could more permanently store carbon captured by algae is to incorporate it into our building materials in the similar vein to how wood as a building material is actually a carbon sink. But it's not all bad news for direct air capture. In fact, DAC and algae can go hand to hand to create a more effective carbon capture solution. With direct air capture capturing large volumes of CO2 to feed algae and increase CO2 uptake by the algae. Though something important to note is that we shouldn't ignore more natural uh, carbon capture solutions either, such as reforesting our rainforests and restoring our coral reefs and things of that nature. In order to fix climate change, we're going to need to harness both nature and human ingenuity. Anyway, I'd like to give a shout out and a bit of a thank you to ask me about my O'Neill cylinder from the bright green uh, Discord server for uh, getting me to uh, make this video. Uh, I think it's great because this is a uh, important topic uh, to discuss when it comes to carbon capture. And yeah, that's basically it. This has been the seventh Adina installment. If you like what you see here and you want to see more from me, then don't forget to like, subscribe, and check up on me once in a while. Also, sharing content like this around the web helps me a lot, and I'm really appreciative of it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I've been Adam, I'll catch you all next time. Take care, bye for now.